Prepare to step back in time to the glorious era of old Hollywood where beauty, talent, and elegance defined an entire generation of actresses. In this mesmerizing journey, we're going to explore the captivating lives and extraordinary homes of five iconic stars, delving into every exquisite detail from the interior to the exteriors. Buckle up for a tour of these timeless abodes, each with a story as enchanting as the stars themselves. We're gonna kick things off with Marilyn Monroe and her iconic bungalow. Our first stop is Marilyn's enchanting world, the quintessential Hollywood icon. Nestled in the heart of Brentwood, Los Angeles, Marilyn once owned a cozy bungalow, which was a vision of classic glamour and elegance. Step inside to discover the soft, muted colors, vintage Hollywood memorabilia, and elegant furnishings that adorned her living space. The bedroom, where Marilyn found peace, is an intimate space that tells a story of vulnerability and charm. In 1962, Marilyn Monroe acquired the 1929 Spanish colonial hacienda for $77,500. Imagine that. Houses were actually that price. Anyways, this was shortly after her divorce from playwright Arthur Miller. Despite having resided in an impressive total of 43 residents throughout her life, this was the very first property that she personally purchased. The allure of this residence, a four bedroom, three bathroom abode is clear. It was famously referred to by movie producer and neighboring resident Rodney Lieber as one of the most renowned houses in the world in the LA Times. Situated on half an acre within the renowned Brentwood neighborhood, the property features a generous swimming pool and a thriving citrus orchard. Tragically, it was also the location where Monroe was discovered deceased at the age of 36, six months after she had moved in due to an over of sleeping pills. Next, we'll visit the timeless beauty Audrey Hepburn, celebrated for her grace and style. The actress called a chic apartment in New York City her home, which was an elegant space that definitely mirrored her sophistication and love for simplicity. As we explore this charming abode, you'll witness the delicate balance of art and functionality in her decor. The living room, bathed in soft, natural light, evokes a sense of serenity. Her love for plants and vibrant yet understated accents show Audrey's refined taste. This apartment tells the story of a woman who is the embodiment of beauty and grace both in her on-screen and off-screen life. Her iconic brownstone from the hit breakfast at Tiffany's is also an actual home in New York City. Tucked away in New York City's Upper East Side, this brownstone is picturesque. Its cream Italian style exterior trimmed appropriately in Tiffany blue. Originally designed in 1866 by John Sexton, the building, which appears in the 1961 film, as a series of separate units was renovated into a duplex in 1947. Spanning over 4,465 square feet, this brownstone spreads its five bedrooms and four baths over a staggering five stories. Inside the home is the embodiment of New York glamour. Gold accents and mini chandeliers throughout the home are positioned alongside sumptuous white couches and fireplaces for an old world feel. Our journey now takes us to the lavish villa of Elizabeth Taylor in Beverly Hills. This extraordinary residence was a testament to her opulent lifestyle and charm. As we stroll through the meticulously landscaped gardens, we'll feel the grandeur of this estate. The Mediterranean-inspired architecture with its ornate details and sprawling rooms captures the essence of her larger-than-life personality. Elizabeth lived in many homes, but I'm sure you would too if you were married eight times. This gated estate in the hills she shared with her second husband, Michael. Michael Welding was purchased by the couple in 1954, and they proceeded to raise their two sons here until their ultimate divorce. The 1952 built home sat on two acres of land with six beds and seven baths inside, as well as sweeping views of downtown LA, the Pacific Ocean, and the valley below. The mansion covered over 7,700 square feet, featuring a large car park, open patio, fountain courtyard, four fireplaces, art studio, atrium, maid quarters, and much much more. Our next destination is the stunning home of Ava Gardner, tucked away in the lush hills of Nichols Canyon, Los Angeles. 
this oasis was a retreat from the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, a tranquil haven for Ava. Each room in this home is a work of art, telling the story of an extraordinary woman who found solace in the simplicity and tranquility of her home. In 1948, following the dissolution of Ava's first two brief marriages to Mickey Rooney and fan leader Artie Shaw, and before she went on to marry Frank Sinatra in 1951, the stunning actress decided to put down some roots in this home in LA's Nichols Canyon. The house she bought for herself was a simple stucco cottage, set up on a high and sunny rocky slope. While modestly decorated evidently by the actress herself, it seems to hold some of the actual woman who dwelled somewhere within one of Hollywood's famous, maybe even notorious, love goddesses. Our final destination is the enigmatic mansion of Greta Garbo, situated in the heart of Beverly Hills. Greta's mysterious allure is mirrored in the elegant architecture and exquisite interior of her home. The inside spaces, adorned with antique furniture and rare art pieces, evoke a sense of timeless charm. Since her arrival in Hollywood in 1925, Greta frequently moved between various rented residences. As the story goes, around 1937 coincides siding with the release of the costume drama Camille, the Swedish board actress temporarily settled into a newly constructed Beverly Hills home with her recently divorced friend and rumored boyfriend, Leopold Stokowski. Stokowski, the British orchestra conductor with distinctive white hair, was renowned for pioneering designer jeans and being the father to Anderson Cooper. According to most accounts, Garbo had already relocated to another rented house by the time Ninochka hit theaters in 1939. This dwelling features a total of five and possibly six bedrooms, along with five bathrooms and a powder room spread across its three stories, encompassing almost 4,700 square feet. Designed to make the most of the canyon-framed view of the downtown skyline, the residence boasts two fireplaces, one of them located in the main floor guest bedrooms. Additionally, three balconies offer splendid views, including one of the primary bedroom and another you can access from an ensuite sweet office bedroom situated beneath a private staircase leading from the street level to car garage. As we wrap up this special journey of the one-time homes of these old Hollywood stars, we can see the legacy they left behind. These houses are not just structures, they are the reminder of an era of timeless beauty, elegance, and charm, where legends of the silver screen found their own personal havens. Each home carries the stories enchanting as the stars who once graced them. Did you have a favorite old Hollywood pad? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. I'll see you all next time. Bye!